buddy John Mayer. Anyway, do you think that you could talk about the amp and your experiences sure. and talk and maybe play a little bit for them? With that Absolutely, right? yeah. Um, as you said, I, I needed an amp to go on tour with Dead and Company with to accompany the, the guitar that we had developed together. And when I came off of that tour, uh, I started to continue to make my album and looked at it and went, well, I've never really plugged any other guitar into it. And so I plugged every other guitar into it and I realized it was really well-defined as the amp for the Super Eagle guitar, but hadn't really gone through the R&D stages to become a full-fledged kind of take-anywhere-catch-all uh, amplifier, which is ultimately what I'm into. You know, we're looking for an amp that stops the hunt for amps. I have so many variables going all the time. What amp should I use? What guitar should I use? What cabinets? What speakers? And I'm looking to sort of stop that uh, search, you know. Do you want to get the amp you love, it, it, it starts to define your sound going forward, and, and, and that's what I was interested in doing. And so then we started working on really honing in the amp to be able to get my sound with my own music, and that got really fun, and, and we were able to include this new dimension of sound without losing the original sound that I had going with the Super Eagle guitar, and it made perfect sense to offer it once, once we had discovered how to get that sound. It made ultimate sense to bring that to other people. And uh, as I mentioned before in a, a different uh, conversation, you know, I'm, I'm sort of interested now in killing this idea of like the unicorn gear. The gear that only exists in your imagination. Four people have it. I heard the last one that came up went for seven billion dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, they found one at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> it, you know, it's, we, we want to sort of stop that thinking because what I want to do is inspire guitar players not to believe that they're limited by their ability to, to get an amplifier. The idea that, well, there's this other app you can't get. Isn't, we, I'm trying to sort of bring it all into uh, sort of accessibility for people. And that is now why we're looking at a JMod 100, which could be a JM Overdrive or a John's Mod. So I kind of like that portamento. And, uh, it's usually about this part when I hear myself babbling that I realize I'm done talking. <laughs> Do you think you, think you could show what the, what the, what the, what the tone was for the uh, dead company? So the, dead, the, 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 the magnificent thing about Jerry Garcia's playing and his music, which still lives on every day, yeah. is that... Uh, where's, my, uh, where's my cable? Here's a, oh, um, is you have to be able to have such articulate single notes that you don't need to go anywhere else. So where we are here, let me just get the right sound. Is That's one note. And most guitars won't allow you to sustain that kind of focus in terms of playing it and people going, wow, there it is, you know. Uh, but we had to develop it so that all these great lines, you know, um, you know. to sustain that, otherwise if you play that on a guitar, you pick up most guitars, it just goes flum, 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 flum. And it has to have that um, intrinsic sort of joy sound to it. That, and, and you get that from a longer scale length, and so it's also very, very clean. Let me get a little more out of it. striking the string, you get this really tight percussive thing, which you have to have for, for that music, you know?
when the tone is right and the feel is right, then your timing is right and your focus is right, and it's the most satisfying experience. I, we've all had really satisfying experiences playing music and really um, confusingly disappointing experiences playing music. There's been jam sessions you walk away from and you go, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I can't, do, and, or, you know, and there's good nights and bad nights as a human being, but what I'm seeking to do is try to eliminate all the variables and gear that we're not really sure why they happen, but when you put the guitar down, you go, that was not a thrill. And when it's a thrill, you don't have to play that much. Yeah. And that is, that is only all I'm after now. Maybe it's because I've had such experiences where I'm, you know, really going for it. When the tone is right. <laughs> in the exact amount that allows you to keep a bounce going on the guitar. And it's a really great sort of rhythmic bounce if you've got distortion on. drummer with this amp because I can just I promise you most guitar amps will not be stiff enough in the power section to be able to dirtier version of it. Uh, you put a different guitar into it, you put a Strat into it, you're going to get the glassy, clean funk thing. You put a Gibson or a P you know, anything with P uh, P uh, PAFs. Uh, and a 594, we well, should plug a 594 in this thing you'd hear. Uh, it'll respond beautifully to kind of each tone you put into it. And I'd rather let the guitars be the different voice for me personally. So they're grabbing a 594 right off the wall, John. Watch me, watch me, uh, strap on That's ballsy. <laughs> what you don't know is on fr Friday after, uh, Friday mornings, all the managers go through, every, we open cases just like you to make sure that we're, this is not a frightening event. We know that uh, this guitar is right. Uh, <laughs> seriously. Yeah, when, when, when Paul handed me the 594 in a hotel room, yeah. and it, you, you, I hadn't even seen, it, yeah. it had, didn't have a number, it was a prototype, and I plugged it in and I went. You know, all I'm looking for is this, the only reason I started playing guitar is because I wanted to sit alone in a room by a window, much like a day like today on a rainy day, and be able to just trip out. I, ever since I was 12, I was like, I just want to be able to sit and do that. And I still try to find that zone. And when I, when I got handed the 594, Give John in for having the courage to do that. I love playing 
lap. Or you, you, you can just... It's, it's like a drum set. be able to do if you were if you were jamming. I just don't love playing hyperactively without a band. It doesn't, yeah. you know, it's, it's the sound of Nam. It's the official sound of Nam. But, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, the hyper, like, oh, jamming with the band, jamming with the band of gypsies in your mind. But uh, that's what I'm looking for in my career and my playing now is this beautiful, you want to be able to, to make a note, you know, intend to make a note, make a note, hear the note, and go, yeah. What's your favorite band and company song to play? And get a few notes if you could, please. Absolutely. Uh, I would say that there's so many that, I mean, I guess part of the fun of it not being my music is that I don't have the relationship of having labored over writing it. I don't have any notions. I'm, I'm not clouded by the frustration of what it was like to write it or, or produce it or record it. So I look at it as these incredible sort of gym, like jungle gyms to play on, you know? And I, I love the ones that have grooves built in, you know, like the ones that I was playing. Uh, I love He's Gone. Oh, I need the, uh, the Super Eagle if I can get that. I, ne I never put on standby when I unplug, guys. I, just, yeah. I have Neither to do I. It is it. It's courtesy, because I don't know what I you like. Don't, I don't unplug things. For I'm an expensive roadie. I'm <laughs> a good job. 25 years, 26 years. Uh, uh, so, all the stuff that goes, uh, you know, these great songs, great, great, great songs. Every guitar player, every musician in the world should learn. They're almost like standards, you know. So there should be a Grateful Dead uh, fake book, you know, real book, whatever. You know, these are things you could play on for days. But this, you know, like he's gone, as it goes. It's really interesting. I've never actually said this before. I'm just thinking about Jerry every time I play. It's I sort of go, th I factor myself in, or him into me, or me into him, or something. I'm. It's a really. In I just thought of it right now as I was playing because I'm in such the mode of putting out my own music. And when I'm playing this stuff, there's not a second that goes by that I'm not thinking. Is this all right, Jerry? This is cool. Yeah. This is what you would do. Yeah. This is like somewhere in the zone. Are we? Are we on? Like, is, there's a there's a really interesting thing. And I just realized happens now where it's like everything is run, run through this algorithm of is that that put it it's it's like a soul circuit that it goes through for that one person you know it's a really interesting job to have if you think about it as an artist is to be yourself but also play in the intended spirit of something and then there's also you know on a rhythm level thing in terms of getting a feeling across you know, Grateful Dead fan slash deadhead, and they will know exactly what that, to be the power of music that you can imply what's going to come for the next 15 to 20 minutes, and what it means. You hear every lyric, every chord change, everything that's about to be, everything based on, you want to be as a musician, you want to be that. You want to get it down to like...
relatively uh, hard to play. It seems like it's just an F chord, but you got to play it with some sort of sweet, a, a re, a sweetness, a sad sweet. I would think if you if you were running everything through the the, the Grateful Dead, the Jerry Garcia uh, sort of prism. It's a sad sweetness. I think that's what we love. That's that's what I love about it. You know, that's that's sad to me. That sounds sad to me. It's hopeful, but it's still sort of sad. So all that all that single note stuff, which this stuff does. So John, thank you very very much for coming. Everybody, if you can give him a big hand for being here. Thank you. Thank you. So I now call this 2017 Pierre's press conference. To an end. Thank you very much for coming. Bye bye. Woo! Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.